Welcome aboard. This is my time viewpoints on Marino World Online. I am Dean Bacani. Joining us is Admiral Leopoldo Laroya, the Commandant of the Philippine Coast Guard. Welcome aboard, Admiral. Thank you very much, Lynn, for inviting me. So, sir, uh, marami at uh, talaga sobrang busy ang Philippine Coast Guard, ano? Napakarami ng inyong mga aktibidad. And uh, especially when it comes to recruitment. So, how is the workforce of uh, our Philippine Coast Guard? Well, uh, at the moment, we have, we are now... 21, some 21,000 strong uh, uh, personnel of the Philippine Coast Guard. Uh, we have a recruitment plan of uh, 4,000 personnel every year. And at the moment, we have recruited 2,000 for this year, and we hope to convene the next 2,000 before the year ends. So we are recruiting at least 4,000 every year. And our plan is uh, to recruit every year until we reach 36,000 personnel. That is equivalent to the uh, length of our uh, Philippine coastline, which is 36,000 kilometers. And we envision to have at least one Coast Guard per, per uh, kilometer of coastline. Yes, as you said, 36,000 kilometers of coastline, more than 36,000. And we're uh, fifth in terms of uh, longest coastline and uh, seventh with the most number of islands with 7,641 islands. Is the workforce target doable before the end of the term of uh, President Rodrigo Duterte? Because I understand in 2016, before his term, around 7,000 lang yata ang Philippine Coast Guard men and women. Yes, yes, you are correct. Uh, the present administration under the leadership of Secretary Tugade has uh, approved the increase in our recruitment plan. And that is why we're happy with the President Duterte's administration, uh, of course, uh, via the Department of Transportation, uh, in supporting our modernization. Uh, the modernization includes the increase of personnel. You are correct in saying that uh, when the administration started, we were just around 7,000. And right now, uh, within five years of the uh, term of the president and his administration, we have grown from 7,000 to more or less 21,000 right now, an estimate of 21,000 right now, which is what? It is about uh, three folds or 300% increase in our number of personnel. Now, uh, you mentioned about whether it is doable to, to achieve the 36,000. Uh, may I just say that the uh, present administration has supported and the Department of Budget and Management has given us the leeway of recruiting 4,000 every year. Uh, with our target of 36,000, that means we still have a balance of uh, 13, uh, about 15,000. So that means that uh, with a program recruitment of 4,000 a year, uh, that means it will take an additional four years to complete our projected 36,000 strength. But again, as I have said, we have already grown by leaps and bounds from uh, 7,000 uh, way back in 2016 uh, to what we are right now, 21,000 strong. Thank you. So Admiral, what are the categories of uh, PCG, uh, PCG personnel? Because I understand there are uh, uniformed and ununiformed. There are uniformed personnel and non-uniformed personnel. So uniform personnel, Tulad Ko, I'm a uniform personnel. So the majority and the bulk of the employment status of the Coast Guard is on uniformed personnel. 
Yung non-uniformed personnel are those that we call term uh, civilian employees. They are covered by civil service rules and regulations. They are mostly on the admin side of uh, the uh, agency. Now, the bulk of the recruitment is on uniform personnel, and there are two categories of uniform personnel. We have the officers and the enlisted personnel. So officers are like me for leadership, and then uh, enlisted personnel are our workforces. Now, for the officers, we also have two categories. These are line officers and technical officers. So when I say line officers, yan yung nasa ground. Those that are assigned in the stations, in the districts, in our respective operational units. When I say technical officers, these are the lawyers, the uh, medical personnel, the uh, dental, the uh, we also have yung uh, pare. So these are what we term technical personnel. So there are job specialties, no? So who can join a PCG and what are the basic uh, qualifications? Yes, uh, on, on our recruitment for officers, uh, you will have to be a college graduate and uh, a PRC license and a and or a uh, civil service qualification uh, test. Our recruitment for officers, while it is uh, generally a college grade, we definitely prefer people who have a, an educational background on maritime uh, because we do envision them to be going aboard ship, you know, performing maritime functions. So we prefer BSMT uh, graduates or BSME graduates. So in other words, anything that is maritime related, but it does not hamper others from joining. So in other words, our top priority would be, as I have mentioned, maritime related college degrees. But we also accept other professional qualifications. For example, we do need those with uh, qualifications on uh, info technology, which is very important uh, nowadays. No? Uh, we also need uh, those with qualifications as engineers. No? So it's actually varied as far as uh, our requirements are concerned. But basically, you have to be a college graduate you have to have a PRC license or a civil service qualification uh, to join the Philippine Coast Guard and should be at least, uh, should be not more than 28 years old during the time of recruitment or the date of recruitment, okay? Now, as far as enlisted personnel are concerned, yun yung workforce namin, no? Uh, the minimum requirement would be just like in the armed forces, it's 72 units uh, uh, college education. So if you have a minimum of 72 units, you can apply already. And uh, the age is uh, basically the same as well. But you know, we also accept enlisted personnel who are college graduates as well. So, but the minimum requirement is 72 units. And That's how all. about your partnership with the uh, maritime schools like uh, PMMA and uh, MAAP? Yes, you are correct. Uh, because these are maritime schools, then we do prefer their graduates. First of all, the discipline in their training is uh, similar to what the Coast Guard is providing in our regular training. No? So we encourage and we have a partnership with the Philippine Merchant Marine Academy. In fact, we have uh, identified uh, scholars who are getting their training uh, at PMMA. And then when they graduate, they are automatically commissioned in the Philippine Coast Guard for the Philippine Merchant Marine Academy. There are also uh, past graduates of PMMA who 
signified their intention to join the Philippine Coast Guard. That means they decided to no longer uh, go aboard ship in merchant, in merchant uh, vessels. Uh, in that case, as long as they are within the age range that I have mentioned, then we are more than willing to accept them in the Philippine Coast Guard. The same holds true with MAAP. Uh, the same training that they provide that instills discipline among personnel and the maritime training that they provide, uh, we accept their applications uh, and we, we do uh, allow them to join the Philippine Coast Guard if they so require and they, they so apply. No? Thank you. Commandant, uh, aside from recruitment, uh, what are the focus of your uh, leadership? What can we expect? Uh, we do have different functions. Uh, it is very varied uh, on maritime safety, which includes maritime search and rescue. We also have marine environmental protection, which is very equally very important no? nowadays, no? especially with everybody looking for a clean and greener seas. And we have maritime security. So the Coast Guard has so many varied uh, functions that uh, we have to expect a lot of people to perform all these functions, especially so that right now during the COVID uh, situation, we even volunteered our services to fight COVID. Have you noticed that even in the airports, uh, the personnel there are from the Philippine Coast Guard? Huh? So besides our core functions, and since we have the personnel, we volunteered our services to help the government in the fight against COVID. Pati yung mga swabbers, uh, pati yung nag assist sa mga OFWs. So even to the point na yung uh, mga naka-quarantine, Coast Guard nandun din. So, you know, Besides our core functions, we have also uh, collateral functions that we have volunteered to the government for the Coast Guard service. So expect that we are very busy with all our core functions plus our collateral functions. Have you noticed also, Lynn, that uh, meron din Coast Guard sa highway? If you notice, there is a DOTR task force, uh, IAC, uh, which is composed of different agencies uh, to implement uh, you know, uh, traffic rules and regulations and apprehend violators. And, they, and since it is under the umbrella of the Department of Transportation, which the Coast Guard is under, we also volunteer the services of the Coast Guard. So mapapansin mo, even sa mga highway, my Coast Guard na kasama ng LTO. So that is how varied our functions are. Thank you. Actually, sa dami na ng mga mandates ninyo, eh. <laughs> lalo pa na-expand during the pandemic. Admiral, how, how, what are the challenges are you encountering in performing your uh, uh, duties? Well, well uh, as far as our core functions are concerned, uh, sanay na kami on maritime safety, search and rescue, marine environmental protection, and maritime security. Now, doon sa mga additional ones, the challenges there is that uh, we provide the manpower. As I have said, no, it's a volunteer uh, service provided by the Coast Guard for the national government to help the national government. No? Uh, we provide the personnel and they are trained to do by, uh, their jobs. No? So the challenges there is that, you know, COVID is here to stay. So while we did expect that the, when the, the pandemic broke, up, uh, broke out last year, uh, it was an emergency situation and the uh, government needed agencies to volunteer. And the Coast Guard uh, immediately volunteered. 
now uh, more than what uh, more than one year, less than two years from now, the Coast Guard is still there. Uh, that means uh, I suppose the government, the administration, uh, like the services provided by the Coast Guard and would like the Coast Guard to continue. So we are committed to doing our jobs, no? uh, even the collateral uh, functions. Now, the challenges, of course, is how uh, we have a lot of personnel. Personnel needs uh, manpower, needs infrastructure. So, salamat sa tulong ni Secretary Tugade and ang ating administration because it has provided for the needed infrastructure for the Philippine Coast Guard. Kaya nga ang tawag is modernized Coast Guard. In fact, all our vessels, all our aircraft were procured during this the time of this administration. And we are very happy at that the government is well supportive of the Philippine Coast Guard as far as infrastructure and all our equipment are concerned. Admiral will just take a short break. Let us know more about our PCG. Maritime Viewpoints will be right back. What if I tell you that KSIM Connect has become a reality? It is the cloud-based ecosystem for maritime education and training, where Kongsberg provides simulation and services to all members. As an instructor, my main goal is to educate and train seafarers to acquire skills promoting safety, sustainability and efficiency at sea. At KSIM Connect, I can efficiently manage my simulators, my exercises and my students. In the exercise archive, I can store my library of exercises and, if I want, collaborate and share them with my colleagues or others in the global community. KSIM Connect enables me to give students access to cloud simulation so they can train anytime and anywhere while learning at their own pace. In addition, I can explore the library of models and exercise areas, download or subscribe those that fit the learning objectives. And I can even order spare parts or a service visit if needed. Kongsberg has started to create the future of maritime education and training by creating the community where instructors can find news, explore and download available simulator models, distribute or share exercises that fit the curriculum. Imagine using Case and Connect to integrate our simulators in the same virtual exercise environment, enabling students to train and interact together. It doesn't matter whether you're in Singapore, Australia or in the United States. As long as you're online, you are part of the knowledge sharing community. Kongsberg is shaping the future of maritime education and training by creating the community. Let's continue building this community together for the benefit of ourselves and the entire maritime training industry. Join KSIM Connect today.
Thank you for staying with us. You're watching Maritime Viewpoints here on Marine World Online. Our guest, PCG Commandant Admiral Leopoldo Laroya. Sir, uh, let's talk about more on the modernization programs of the PCG. We're excited about this, no? Ang dami namin nakikita ang mga developments. Actually, nung nag-start pa lang ako sa maritime media, eh, uh, naaalala ko pa yung lumang building nyo dyan sa Manila. And then, ang ah, laki-laki na talaga ng developments. Nakakatuwa. At uh, marami rin kayong mga uh, ano, no? structures na 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 kumbaga na install na nandiyan na no uh, sa Subic uh, please tell us about the development sir okay. uh, first on training because we have to train 4000 personnel every year so we have created the uh, regional training centers uh, we have regional training centers in Sambuanga in Lagindingan and then uh, uh, the government in Masbate, the local government unit in Masbate, also sponsored, sponsored a regional training center in Masbate. So we have a, a training center in uh, Taguig. We have a training center in Bataan. And we have a training center in La Union. So to cater for the 4,000 personnel that we have to recruit every year. Now, as far as uh, uh, equipment and uh, vessels are concerned, you will notice that we have very, very brand new vessels. Uh, those that came from Japan. Uh, and we have our capital ship, which came from France. Uh, besides that, we also have a, uh, a, a uh, vessel project uh, that is now being made in Japan and expected to be delivered next year. That would be our biggest vessel, a 97-meter vessel. Uh, besides that, we have also uh aircrafts that are brand new uh when the president and uh, secretary Tugade went to puerto princesa palawan they commissioned a brand new cessna caravan aircraft of the philippine coast guard uh and the president announced uh, and directed the DOTR to support an additional three, three more of the same aircraft or a similar type of aircraft to be procured for the Philippine Coast Guard. Uh, on uh, choppers, we have two brand new choppers coming from Europe. And uh, all of these are actually uh, increasing the uh capability of the coast guard in maritime domain domain awareness and law enforcement and search and rescue uh as in terms of uh firearms we have uh, recently completed the procurement of brand new firearms for our personnel coming from israel and we have also installed some uh, remote control weapon system in our vessels coming from Israel as well. Now, what do we expect in the next few years that will come? Uh, hopefully, projects that will modernize, further modernize the Coast Guard are all in the pipeline. Uh, that means uh, gone are the days na luma ang mga barko ng Coast Guard. Ngayon, magaganda ang barko ng mga Coast Guard. Uh, we are also using these vessels in maritime security, uh, doing patrols in the West Philippine Sea. So expect that you have a Coast Guard that is very modern and will modernize further uh, to be able to perform our mandate. Thank you. You know, our K-9, uh grown leaps and bounds uh in fact 
uh, with the support of Secretary Togade and the Philippine Ports Authority. Uh, thank you, by the way, to our general manager of the Philippine Ports Authority because they have provided a uh, uh, Clark, Clark Development Authority provided a property and the Philippine Ports Authority has provided a project for the creation of our K-9 Academy. You know, uh, when we started our K-9, little did we know that a lot of people are really the services of our K-9, not only in ports, even with the local government units, even at the airport, even at the Senate, even in Congress, no? So, yung K-9 namin has been very, very effective and we and it has grown leaps and bounds. In fact, we have supported uh, the uh, development of our K-9. And it's good that they will have an academy so that we can fully train our K-9 dogs and breed the same so that we don't have to buy, you know, K-9 dogs are very expensive. So if we can breed it, by ourselves, then we will do so and do our own training. So K9, our K9s are you know very very important. Let me just add, uh, as a force multi Philippine Coast Guard auxiliary, you know uh, if uh, Lin, as far as the Philippine Coast Guard auxiliary is concerned, it is a volunteer organization, and they have helped up a lot on the Philippine Coast Police's mission. So they are a force multiplier. They may be volunteers, but they have volunteered a lot of their services uh, to the Philippine Coast. Actually, mukhang pati mga celebrities natin, ano, dumadaming uh, na pumapasok sa PCJ. Yes. <laughs> Nakakatawa. Uh, Admiral, uh, how would you describe our modern PCG? And any special concerns you still wish to express regarding the development of our Coast Guard? Uh, when we say modern PCG, as I have mentioned, uh, uh, to modernize the Coast Guard, then we have to address all the issues that has... Uh, uh, befallen the Coast Guard before. So to modernize the Coast Guard would take different approaches. And one of them is recruitment. Definitely, we need to add more personnel. We have quite a big uh, coastline. And, you know, sometimes our detachment are manned only by two people. And, you know, we have to provide the uh, Coast Guard districts. Coast Guard stations and Coast Guard substations. And they should at least be manned by about 20 personnel kapag substations or 20 to 24 personnel. So we are addressing the issue to modernize the Coast Guard. Secondly is with the recruitment of personnel, you have to address the infrastructure that will be needed with the additional personnel. And we have addressed that as well. Uh, again, with the support of our mother department, the Department of Transportation, and the support of, of the president in all our infrastructure requirements. And infrastructure is not only uh, vessels and aircraft, but including buildings, including uh, you know, uh, stations, uh, creations of stations and substations. Uh, so expect that uh, a modern Coast Guard would have all of this recruitment and uh, equipment. Now, uh, as part of my uh, paniniwala, when I took over of, uh, it, as commandant of the Philippine Coast Guard, I have always uh, uh, informed our personnel that part of professionalism is in uh, ensuring that public service 
is given to the public uh, with humility and being humble. So that is one of the core things that I would like to implement while I'm the commandant of the Coast Guard. Bawal na yung mga siga-siga na law enforcer. Uh, kailangan public service with humility and compassion. Thank you. Admiral, given the importance of our uh, Philippine Coast Guard with your mandates, no, uh, there are uh, existing uh, bills in Congress or pending bills. No, uh, is the uh, an example is the amend amendment to the Republic Act 9993, the House Bills 4286 and uh, 4287. Are you also pursuing this? Uh, correct, Lynn, no. Uh, uh, first, of, first of all, let me address why there is an amendment to the Coast Guard law. You know, uh, the uh, Coast Guard law, when it came out, it was okay in the start. But uh, as time went by, uh, we saw some uh, infirmities in the law, uh, mostly administrative. So, for example, the uh, retirement of our personnel, our enlisted personnel, uh, has been greatly disadvantageous. Uh, you will note, Lynn, that the Coast Guard, before it became part of the Department of Transportation, was part of the armed forces. So we were, in fact, part of the Philippine Navy. So we do expect as a uniformed organization to have the same pay and allowances uh, from our counterparts from the AFP and the PNP. Now, uh, we found out that there are infirmities in our law such that our enlisted personnel, when they retire, their uh, retirement uh, pay, no? is much lower than that of the AFP. Uh, as an example, no, ang, ang Master Sergeant, uh, pag nag yan, one step increment yung retirement pay, which would have been an ensign or second lieutenant equivalent of the base pay. Now, yung sa amin, hindi. Kaya yun ang karamihan ng reklamo Ang mahirap niyan, you know, our personnel have served the country well. Especially if they retired at the age of 56, they have served more than 30 years in the government service. So they expect a lot, no, as far as their benefits are concerned. And so, to address this issue, we need that amendment of the Coast Guard law. Now, uh, what is the status of the amendment? In the House of Representatives, the Committee on Transport has already come up with a substitute bill. After so many meetings, after so many brainstorming, uh, the Committee on Transport has already come up with a substitute bill to address all issues that were raised during the committee meetings. So hopefully, we are hoping that from the committee level, it will go to plenary and uh, be endorsed as a law. Lynn? Uh, now, in the Senate, we have tapped the services of uh, Senator Poe and uh, Senator Lapson and Senator Soto. Uh, we have uh, some assurances that they will also uh, support the substitute bill in the House uh, so that it will be the same already. Para mas mahirap kasi kung iba-iba eh. So maganda kung pareho na para mas supportahan nila. As I have mentioned, it is very, very important. There are some infirmities in our Coast Guard law and definitely it needs uh, improvement by coming up with an amended law. Thank you, Lynn. But how about the other benefits, sir? Uh, I understand there is also a PCG hospital 
that is being established? What's the status of the PCC? Uh, uh, Lynn, uh, uh, there is a law already in the creation of the PCG hospital. Uh, however, uh, we know for a fact that the uh, government is uh, cash trapped as far as because, you know, uh, we have to look for funds also for the fight against COVID. So our hospital uh, has to uh, give way to priorities in government. But definitely, since there is a law already, then we are allowed to create our Coast Guard Hopes Hospital that is for our personnel and their dependents. And it will come sooner or later in the future. Uh, probably when the situation stabilizes and government has enough funds to support this, then uh, we do hope that uh, the government will support the creation of our Coast Guard Hospital. What are your wish lists for our Philippine Coast Guard? Uh, my wish list is that uh, even with the changes in administration, I hope that uh, any administration will support the uh, Philippine Coast Guard. You know, uh, we have done a lot already. Uh, you know, uh, for us to realize a true modern Coast Guard, we need the support of the public and government. And so my vision for the Coast Guard would be a continuous support to modernize the same. And then with that, we promise to have a professional Coast Guard uh, that will be able to do its function uh, well and uh, provide better public service to all the people. Thank you. Thank you so much, Admiral. Thank you. Thank you for your valuable time and thoughts. Admiral Leopoldo Laroya, the Commandant of the Philippine Coast Guard. Thank you for watching Maritime Viewpoints. Stay tuned on Marine World Online for more Maritime News and Views. Philippines is an archipelagic country and will always be. God bless Maritime Philippines. I am Lynn Bakari. Yeah.